I know why you're here. Do you want to own an NBA team? Do you want to control the best players in the world and put them in the best positions to win you a championship? Do you want to laugh in the faces of all the other GMs in the league because you're so much better than them? Well, my fellow basketball fans, I'm here to take you on your fantastic journey. You B.I.G. What's up, everybody? Thank you for tuning in to my channel. This is Ballin' Fantasy with NKB. I'm gonna be your fantasy guy, Naquanta, AKA NKB. And as you know from the title, this is an introduction video to how to get started on playing fantasy basketball. For the sake of being a true introduction video, I have the mindset that I'm gonna be teaching my grandma how to play fantasy. So I'm gonna be going into the basics of basics on how to get started. If you've been playing for a while, if you've already been in a league before, you may not need this information, but still stay tuned because it's always great to have that refresher and just to be that much more prepared during the season. In a nutshell, you are a fantasy general manager or GM for short. In your specific league, you will be one of generally 10 to 12 other GMs. As GMs, you all will own NBA players, not physically, but electronically, but not legally. You know what I'm talking about. To acquire these NBA players, you all will participate in a fantasy draft. Once you have drafted, you will compose your fantasy lineup, your fantasy team. Every individual player on your team will accumulate points for you based on their real life production. For instance, if you have Russell Westbrook on your team and that Monday night he records a triple double, you will be rewarded with his stat line and his stats will go towards points for your fantasy team. Typically in leagues, you will face off against another fantasy GM on a weekly basis. The goal is to, of course, accumulate more points than that other GM to win that week. You will generally do this for around 20 weeks. Yes, 20 weeks. The NBA season is very long. And after about those 20 weeks or so are up, um, hopefully your team was good enough to earn a playoff spot. Once you're in the playoffs, of course, you want to win every single game. Generally, the playoffs are single elimination. So once you lose, that's it. But hopefully you are good enough to reach the championship. And of course, you win that championship matchup you have won the league and you have claimed that glory. So that's what fantasy is in a nutshell. Time to go a little bit more in depth on all those steps to get to that championship. There are three leagues that you will come across. You have points-based leagues, rotisserie leagues, and my personal favorite, head-to-head -head leagues. Now, I'm gonna talk about rotisserie leagues first because this league is what fantasy enthusiasts generally deem an expert league or a league for someone that's been playing for a while because there's really no margin for error when constructing your team. Every single statistical category is essential. Your team needs to be balanced. Every category needs to be well represented within your team. If you have one category or two categories that you're not doing that well in, you will fall behind fast and it is very hard to build your team up mid-season after the draft. So you really need to start off with a great team in the beginning. So that is why rotisserie leagues, I don't personally find as entertaining as the other two leagues. But if you're looking for a more statistical, a more strategic league, rotisserie is for you. But I would not recommend it for beginners. Just to read the definition of a rotisserie league, Rotisserie leagues rank each of the teams in the league from first to last in a number of statistical categories. Points are then awarded according to the order of finish of each category and are totaled to determine an overall score in place. So for instance, a team with the most blocks in a 10 team league will receive 10 points. The team with the second most blocks will receive nine points, and the team with the third most blocks will receive eight points, and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah, as you can see with this league, it's not for beginners. Let's just put it that way. I wouldn't recommend it for you if you're just starting out, but if you wanna go head first into it, by all means, do that. Now let's talk about points leagues. Points leagues are on the opposite end of the spectrum compared to rotisserie leagues, 
as it is the easiest league for a beginner to come in and flourish. The ultimate goal of a points league is to score as many points as possible regardless of method those points come from. If your points, rebounds, steals, and assists combine to let's say 50 points and that is more than what your opponent gets, boom, you win that week. So that's why that one is a little bit easier than rotisserie leagues. And while it may be the easiest for beginners to start with, I still don't recommend that one as it is, might be a little too easy, doesn't require as much strategy. And that brings us to, again, my favorite head-to-head -head leagues. In head-to-head -head leagues, fantasy players face off against each other on a weekly basis in order to win more categories than their opponents. And by categories, I mean individual statistics. So that's rebounds, points, assists, etc. For instance, if your league has a nine category format, you would want to win at least five of those categories to beat your opponent that week. So if I have 29 rebounds and my opponent has 13 rebounds, that's one point in my favor. And the great thing about head-to-head -head leagues is that it promotes that trash talk atmosphere, that me against you that we all love. That's why I love this game. And even though it's a little bit easier than rotisserie leagues, there's still a lot of strategy that goes into it. You still have to draft really well. You do want players that contribute in every single category, but it does allow you the freedom to punt some categories. So for instance, if you want to enjoy all the stats of a player like DeAndre Jordan or Dwight Howard, you will get lots of rebounds, lots of blocks, some steals, points, but you will, without a doubt, always lose in free throws. But like I said, you just need to get more statistics than your opponent. So even though you will lose in free throws, those points, rebounds, steals, and blocks that you will get from them, they'll still contribute to your team and hopefully you will get that win for the week. Now that we've gone over the three main leagues that you're gonna be getting into, I talked a lot about categories when discussing those leagues. So let's talk about that. Let's talk about the categories that you will be dealing with while in these leagues. So a majority of the leagues that you will be coming across will mainly be dealing with at least nine categories, points, rebounds, assists, steals, blocks, turnovers, field goal percentage, three pointers made, and free throw percentage. Now some leagues will add more categories or more statistics than those core nine. They might add actual three point percentage or actual field goals made or free throws made. Sometimes that can add another element that could be fun for your league. And sometimes it could be overwhelming and a little bit convoluted. I normally just stick with the nine core categories and it's really fun just with those nine. So I recommend trying to get in a league with those nine categories. Now let's talk about individual player positions. This section is fairly simple since the roster positions on your fantasy team is pretty much the same positions that you'll see on an actual basketball court. So you have point guard, shooting guard, small forward, power forward, and center. Now that's only five positions. And of course, to make things interesting and to make things a lot more fun, you're gonna need more than five positions on your fantasy team just to have more players and to be more active. So in the world of fantasy basketball, they've added a few more general positions to the fantasy roster so that we can have more players in our lineup. And those positions are guard, forward, sometimes forward slash center, and also utility players. In the guard position, you can start any player that's labeled as a point guard or a shooting guard. In the forward position, you can start any player that is labeled as a small forward or a power forward. And with the forward slash center position, it's the same thing with the forward position, but you can now add a center into that position. And with utility players, you can add any player. So that's any of the positions, any player that is available, you can put them in that position. Now also what you'll see on your fantasy team, at the bottom there will be bench spots. 
and these bench spots are for players that you will not have in your active lineup for that week or for that day that you're gonna be playing your players. So the bench is are for players that are maybe not playing that day or are injured or you feel like they won't have a good game. Those are players that you don't want contributing to your team for that week or for that day. So that's what your bench spot is for. Now that we know about all of the roster positions that you can fill up on your team, in order to get the players to fill those positions, we need to draft. So let's talk about the draft. If you are just starting out, the type of draft that you'll most likely be in is a live draft or an online draft. On an online draft, you and the other GMs in your league will come together at a specific time on a specific date on an online draft lobby to select your players round robin style. And each player will have about one to three minutes to draft their players. And depending on how many players you're drafting, usually it's about 13 players. The whole draft will take about an hour to two hours. I would suggest getting into your lobby about 10 to 20 minutes before the actual draft starts. The lobby usually opens about 30 minutes before the draft starts. So get in there 10 to 20 minutes prior. Just go through and select every single player that you want to draft. Every single player that you're interested in, just go ahead and select them. They will move over to a specified list for you. Uh, my players type of list or something like that it will just be a list of all the players that you selected and as the draft is going um, unfortunately other players will obviously draft players that you're interested in as they draft those players they will leave your list and that will leave you with the nice little condensed list of players um, that are still available for you to draft when your turn comes and it just makes it a lot more easier to uh, select your players as your turn comes up um, because you never want to be in that position where you're panicking, the time's running down, and you auto draft somebody that you really don't want. So that's just a little tip to be prepared um, during your draft. Go in there a few minutes early uh, so you can just be prepared. Now, if you are in a position where you're in a local league or if you're in a league with all your friends and you want to have a physical draft where you're all in one physical location, you will be a participating in an offline draft. It should work the same way as an online draft. You will just have your uh, one person, generally the commissioner of the league, that is coordinating the draft. There may not be so many uh, restrictions as far as uh, time limit to draft your players. It's definitely going to be a lot more fun than an online draft uh, just because you're there with everybody. It's a social setting and you can have fun drinking, drinking beers, eating pizza and all things like that. If you're fortunate, that's a great thing. Uh, so yeah. So you know what type of league you want to play in. You know what scoring formats you want to try out. You know what player positions there are in your league. And you know how you're going to be drafting those players. But where do you do all of that? You have to find a platform or a website that you have to play on. So let's talk about that. Now, there are many different websites that you can play fantasy basketball on. But I'm only going to talk about the two most widely used websites. And that's going to be Yahoo and ESPN. There really isn't going to be much to talk about because there isn't much difference between the websites when it comes to engaging in your league and playing in your fantasy league. The only differences are the layout of the web page, user interface. So um, it's all about personal preference. I prefer Yahoo because after your season is done, if you win first, second, or third place, go to your profile and see all the teams that you've had in the past years and the leagues that you've won and all those trophies. Plus it's the first one that I started with, so I've just been consistent with it. But I've played on ESPN also, and there's absolutely nothing wrong with it. If you start off with ESPN and you like it, stick with ESPN. You don't have to jump around to different websites. There really isn't that much difference. So go to google.com in the search bar, type in Yahoo Fantasy Basketball or ESPN Fantasy Basketball and click on those top links provided for you and that'll take you right where you need to be to join leagues. On the Yahoo website, you'll see a little blue button that says join league. On ESPN's website, to the right of the page, you will see two red buttons. One says draft team now, and the other says draft team later. Click on those links, and of course, you have to be registered to these websites. So if you already registered, perfect. If you aren't still, click on the links, 
and they will provide you with um, the steps to register. So if you aren't registered, go ahead, follow those steps. You'll be good to go. Now, once you're on the page, it'll be a list of leagues that you can go ahead and join. The list provides everything that you need to know about the leagues. It lets you know how many um, GMs or how many players are in that league and how many slots are filled currently. It'll let you know the type of league it is, the scoring format. It'll let you know the draft type and also the draft date and time. It'll give you all the leagues that are gonna be drafting that same day. So uh, since it's really early in the off season right now, you don't run a draft now pretty much because there's so much time between now and the start of the NBA season. So many things can happen. So many things can change with players and the rosters. As we see now, there's trades going down. You don't wanna be stuck in a situation where you draft a player and his whole outlook of the season changes. He gets injured in preseason or in training camp or something, and that's just a wasted pick for you. So, so that's what I have for you guys. I know I covered a lot. There's a lot more I can talk about, but I hope you learned something from this video. I hope you're ready to dive deep into the world of fantasy basketball. As I said earlier, I'm your fantasy guide. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. Hit me up on Twitter, the link's in the description. If you love the NBA, fantasy, or basketball in general, subscribe, hit that subscribe button. It's gonna be a fun and crazy ride, and I'm here to take that ride with you guys. Stay tuned for the next video. I'm out.